I have chosen to team back up with Matt Jansen. Um, Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting topics, and the first one, as you can see, is about Ian Valier finally switching coaches, stopping working with Patrick Tour, and getting back with Matt Jansen. Now this one, this topic, I find particularly interesting, I hope you guys will as well, because I was, I was expecting this, honestly. I mean, I made a video about this, and I really thought it was going to happen, because this is the second time Patrick Tour messed it up with Ian Valier, and he also messed it up with James Hollins yet. Now, I'm not saying Patrick Tour is a bad coach. No, I listened to his podcast, I know the results that he had with, like, amateurs and low-level pros, but when it comes to, like, top pros, apparently there's something that is missing there. He's not really having great success with these guys. So James stopped working with him, and now Ian did as well. And I think Ian probably stayed with him for a little bit too long. Now, you guys probably remember that Tampa Pro, when Ian lost to Hunter, Ian looked horrible at that show. Like, he was completely messed up. I mean, he was flat as hell, he was not big enough, his uh, tan was horrible, his confidence, his posing, everything was just so wrong. And then, next show they did was New York Pro after the Tampa, and that show he won, but he was heavily criticized because he wasn't really in condition, but he was blasting full. What they did for that show compared to Tampa was nothing. I remember after Ian failed that show, Tampa Pro, he went and did an interview with Dave Palombo at RX Muscle, and Dave Palombo suggested to Ian to just not change anything the last week or the last day, because what Ian told him is that he looked far better days and weeks prior to the show than at the actual show, because they were doing so many crazy things trying to pick him to make him look the best, and it backfired, he looked horrible. So then at the New York, they listened to Dave Palombo and they did absolutely nothing and he won the show, but it wasn't his absolute best peak. And ever since that show, based on what I heard from Ian on Fuad's podcast and on Ian's Q&A, which is happening very regularly, they kind of kept using the same tactic, you know, the last week they weren't doing any kind of crazy peak week protocols, like he was keeping his water very high, they weren't doing stuff like water loading, sodium loading, then like cutting water, cutting sodium, or like carb depleting and then carb loading, and sometimes they weren't even using any diuretics. And you can say that it kind of worked. I mean, he won a couple of shows. He was second at the Arnold. He was seven at the Mr. Olympia two times. So he was having success with Patrick. That's for sure, obviously. But was he at his absolute best? Was his physique actually peaking? Like, that's the question. Because if you watch Matt Jansen's clients, like Sean Clarida, uh, Nick Walker, or even Brett Wilkin, uh, Charles, Charles Griffin, you watch them in that final weekend, they change so much. Like, on the day of the show, they look incredible. You wouldn't expect that they will look that good on the stage, because what Matt Jansen does is really good. Like, he really knows how to pick these guys. He knows how to dehydrate them, he knows how to carve them up fully, and he never, basically almost never, Matt Jensen never misses the mark. He always picks his athletes at their absolute best. Like, he always gets maximum out of them. And that is the most important thing here. Because there were a couple of very important times when Patrick was unable to pick Ian. And he actually messed him up completely. Like, that Tampa Pro, he completely ruined him at that show. And even though it wasn't like Olympia or Arnold, it wasn't like uh, all eggs in one basket kind of show, I think it did really affect him mentally quite a bit, you know, losing to Hunter. Not just losing to Hunter, but looking like that, looking horrible. And then, the biggest disaster, I believe the pivoting point for Ian to decide, actually, to make this big decision to stop working with Patrick was obviously at the Olympia, because last year what Ian did was simply solely focusing on Mr. Olympia, so he did one cooler pro, which was an easy show for him to win, the biggest competition there was Antoine Weant, who was like, who looked great, but he's not even top 15 at the Mr. Olympia, so everybody else was like complete no-name guys, so it was a really easy show for Ian, I don't think he got much satisfaction from that show, aside from looking very good at that show, looking really big, not super conditioned, but like really big, 
and then he wanted to really peak to look amazing for the Mr. Olympia, that's why he didn't do any shows in between, even though he probably wanted to, he just wanted to do his absolute best at the Olympia, and he put all eggs in that one basket, and he messed it up, I mean, Patrick messed it up, Ian talked about this on a podcast, I made a video about this, it was as simple as just mistakes during the peak week, and that was it, Patrick simply made a bunch of wrong decisions, correct me if I'm wrong, I can't really remember exactly, but I think it was something like Ian was a little bit too full on Friday morning, so they cut out carbs and water and, and like uh, electrolytes, and then he was too flat, and they tried to make it up, they did a more diuretic, stuff like that, I don't know, it was like a, a mess, because Patrick was unsure, he was insecure what he should do, and those kind of mistakes do not happen to Matt Jensen, at least not as often. Now, this is the second time that Patrick messed it up with Ian, and that was simply two times too many for Ian, so he decided to end things. Now, I'm gonna play this video for you where he kind of explains why he started working with Matt and why he stopped working with Patrick, but he doesn't really tell us why he stopped working with Patrick, and that's why I wanted to tell you exactly why he stopped. I just explained it to you because Ian is not gonna do that. He's not gonna tell you the things that I told you. And it's just logical. Because, you know, he likes Patrick. I mean, they had success together. And he is not stopping working with him because Patrick is not trying hard. Because Patrick really put all of his effort into Ian. He just isn't good enough coach. That's it. Like, he's a great coach. But he's not Matt Jansen type of coach. Level of a coach. So let me show you this part of the video where Ian explains why he stopped working with Patrick and why he got back with Matt Jensen. My plan is to do Toronto Pro in just under 13 weeks, so I've been kind of back at it into kind of prep mode for the last three weeks or so. I have chosen to team back up with Matt Jansen. Um, um, you know, Matt and I worked together from 2015 to 2019. You know, I won my first pro show with Matt. I went, did my first Olympia with Matt. Um, there's a lot of history there. Um, you know, we're both with Ron Revive, obviously. And there's just a, a, a relationship and a trust that's already built there that made that decision not the decision to change coaches, that was a very hard decision, um, but the decision to choose Matt on the other end of that uh, was, was a very easy decision. Um, nothing but the greatest things to say about Patrick. Um, he was an excellent coach. He always put uh, his full effort um, and tried his absolute best to make sure I was at my best. But um, time has come for another change. So, you guys should definitely go and check out Ian's video on his YouTube channel, but really, he never really explains why he stopped working with Patrick, aside from saying it's time for a change, and he says Patrick always put his best effort, and I believe he did, I believe he really tried super hard, but apparently he just isn't good enough, and Matt is right now arguably second best coach in the world. Hani is definitely the first, and then you have uh, Matt, Milo Sharchev, and Chris Asito, those three guys are battling for that second best coach in the world spot, you guys can tell me who do you think is second best, but Matt is definitely up there, and I won't say I knew it, but I, I kind of thought, I, I really thought, I actually asked Ian on his Q&A, he decided to ignore my question, but uh, yeah, he posted this photo when Matt was prepping him, and he said, throwback 2019 Vancouver Pro, one of the fuller looks I brought with Matt Jansen, and then you have Matt Jansen also commenting, <laughs> does this situation seem familiar to you? Well, it was the same when Nick got back with Matt, they didn't announce anything, they worked for a couple of weeks, and then Nick posted a photo with Matt, and Matt commented, and then we all assumed that it was happening, and it was the same with Ian now, so he's back with Matt, I believe this makes total sense, they are working together, I mean Ian is sponsored by Raw and Revive, and Matt is owner of those companies, and uh, you know, they, they had success, they had great success back then, and in the meantime, Matt became much better coach than he was back then, and apparently Ian didn't have great great success with his current coach Patrick Tour, so this just really made sense, I think this is a great decision for Ian, I believe he will make more success now, far more than he ever did, I don't think he ever peaked, that's what I believe, I think he's about to peak at Toronto in 13 weeks, like really crazy, he's going to bring something ridiculous, like full like this, like he was in Vancouver, with better conditioning and overall improved physique with more details, 
That's gonna be crazy package, I can't wait to see that, and I'm a big fan of Ian Wally and his physique, and I can't wait to see him at his 100%, I'm really excited about this, whatever you guys think though, tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, so the next story, which I found also very, very interesting, it's about Nick Walker and his result at the Arnold Classic. So ever since the Arnold Classic, ever since Nick lost this show, and everybody thought, not everybody, but a lot of people thought that he should have won, and still people do believe that he was robbed. People also believe that uh, Rami was robbed, some people would say that Andrew was robbed. It's always like that with these big shows when it is kind of close, uh, there are people who are fans of certain bodybuilders, but there are so many fans of Nick Walker and so many of them believe that Nick was absolutely robbed, that he shouldn't have won this show. And it kind of seemed like Nick was also feeling the same way because of that story that he reposted. I don't know if you guys caught it, if you didn't, here it is. It doesn't have to really mean anything, but as you can see it says this is why bodybuilding judging is BS. Two far superior conditioned guys lose to a soft water holding a loaf. So basically, indirectly, Nick Walker called out Samson. I shouldn't say called out, he insulted him badly. And then at that point everybody thought Nick Walker was salty, like really salty, that he lost this show to Samson, and then for damage control he made this, uh, this post uh, congratulating Samson, saying that he's a great dude, great guy, and he's incredibly happy for him, blah blah blah, which I don't think seems very genuine, but it is what it is, I mean that's what he said, that's a good thing he did, and then there is this new Q&A that he did on his Instagram, and I thought some of the comments that Nick made were very interesting, so let's check them out. So somebody asked Nick what was the feedback from the judges, and Nick says, my legs were too small. And that was obviously the case, his legs were not just too small, but too flat. When he was fuller at the Mr. Olympia, or let's say when he wasn't in as great of a shape, when he was a little bit more watery, maybe a little bit more fat, and just wasn't dieting as hard, when he stayed a little bit bigger, his legs were definitely looking fuller. So I think that package was better, and that kind of package could have won this Arnold. But let's see if Nick agrees with that. The question is, do you think your Olympia look would have won the Arnold? And he says, no, I don't. Why is that? Why he thinks his Mr. Olympia look wouldn't have won the Arnold? I mean, he did beat Samson at the Olympia, and he did look different. He did look bigger and fuller. So why does he think that that kind of look wouldn't have won the Arnold and beaten Samson? Well, there is an answer for that as well. The question is the same like the one before, but the answer is a bit longer. Uh, so basically he says, no, I don't think I would have won the Arnold with the package I had at the Olympia. He says, I was drier, I was leaner, harder, sure, maybe not as full, but still full, but overall better. So he believes his overall package was better at the Arnold than it was at the Olympia. And the reason why he lost to Samson, obviously, apparently, was because Samson improved that much. He is not really saying that, but that's kind of what he is saying, indirectly. I mean, if he believes he was better, and obviously Samson was much better, then if he beats him again, that means Samson improved a lot, even more, than Nick did. Which I do believe is the case, I do believe Samson improved significantly, but I would disagree with Nick, even though he was super peeled at the Arnold, and maybe he was improved in certain areas, I still believe because of that, uh, of him chasing the conditioning, he lost some of the size of the legs, and that's why he, that's the main reason why he lost. Sure, the structure wasn't uh, as good as Samson's, and maybe the symmetry, like the, the, the balance of the physique, like the proportions, and the shape overall, stuff like that, but main reason, I think the main reason was simply his legs were a little bit too flat, and that's basically the feedback that he got from the judges, so I still believe, even though he wasn't super sharp at the Olympia, I think that package would have been more competitive. Would that package beat Samson? I don't think so, I still don't think so, but it would have been more competitive. Now this story is interesting because it seems like he doesn't really believe the judges, he doesn't believe the feedback that he got from the judges. The question is, do you think you lost too much muscle for the Arnold prep? And he says, I lost zero muscle. And then he also says, he maybe wasn't super full, but he was still very full. 
So if he wasn't flat, if he was really full and he lost zero muscle, how are his legs smaller then? I guess he doesn't even believe that his legs were down in size. The next one is not really related to Arnold Classic, it's question about his off-season, but I thought it was interesting. The question is, what are the improvements that you're focusing on to win the Olympia this year? And like, you would expect him to say, you know, bring up the quads. But his answer is getting my deadlift game up. Why would he work on his deadlift game? I don't think that really makes a lot of sense. Is he trying to make his hamstrings even bigger? His hamstrings are plenty big. And like his back, I don't think it needs like much improvement. Like the erectors or whatever traps. I don't see how this makes sense. I really don't. And if anything, he's probably gonna blow out his waist doing crazy heavy deadlifts. And like grow his glutes, which are also really big. So maybe he's trolling. I don't think this makes a lot of sense. Also, in a podcast with Guy Cisternino, Nick says that he doesn't plan on blasting his offseason, like doing crazy bulking, because he doesn't want to just grow overall. He doesn't want to blow out his waistline. He's going to try, I guess, to improve on his physique with training and not a lot of food. So I don't know how this uh, deadlift game fits into this equation, but... It is what it is. You guys tell me what do you think. And the last one is something I found particularly interesting. I think this is the first time that I'm seeing Nick Walker actually doubting himself. The question was, have you lost confidence in your ability to win the O after this weekend? And he says, I'd be lying if I said no. So f first time ever, I believe, the first time ever I'm hearing Nick Walker saying that he lost confidence. He is not sure anymore if he can actually win the Mr. Olympia. For so long, he was always saying, I'm going to win everything. Like, I'm going to win the Arnold, I'm going to win the New York Pro, I'm going to turn pro, I'm going to win the Mr. Olympia, I'm going to win the Mr. Olympia once again, I'm going to win the Arnold. And a lot of times, he actually did what he said he was going to do, but I guess this Arnold, you know, affected him mentally. Because he was a heavy favorite at this show, and he brought, as he believes, a much better version of himself, and still he lost to a guy that he just beat two, three months prior to this show. So this was a blow at his self-esteem, at his confidence. So I think this is like the first time we are seeing a chink in Nick Walker's armor. Like always, he was always the most confident guy, always believing he can do anything, he can win the Mr. Olympia. This is the first time ever to see him say that he's doubting himself, that he lost confidence in his ability to win the Mr. Olympia. So this is definitely not the best moment for Nick Walker, but I appreciate him being honest and really saying what he feels. And I honestly, like in, if you ask me, I know he doesn't have the best structure. I definitely prefer Samson's structure over Nick's, but I believe Nick still has a chance to win the Mr. Olympia if he and he is always on, like he's basically, he's never really completely off. He's always on. If the other guys are a little bit off and he improves a little bit more, I mean, he was third already. So what are two more spots? I still think he can win the Mr. Olympia, but if he doesn't believe it, then that's definitely making things more difficult for him and also difficult for us to believe in him if he doesn't believe in himself. So this is the first time I'm seeing Nick without confidence in his ability to win the Mr. Olympia, but at least he's being honest, and it kind of makes sense. I mean, this loss at the Arnold Classic was a bit of a kick in the stomach for Nick Walker. Tell me, what do you guys think down below? And lastly, we got an announcement, an official announcement from Larry Wills that he's actually going to be competing in Classic, that his prep is starting. So he has been talking about this uh, ever since he got that, uh, I think, heart issue. He stopped using gear. He went off. I think he's on, uh, not TRT, I think he's completely off or just on TRT. And he lost a lot of size. He lost a lot of strength. And he was posting a lot of physique updates. And he was actually saying that he wants to work on his physique now that he can't really be at his strongest. And, like, he was, he was mentioning that he might compete in Classic. But, like, I was doubtful. I wasn't sure if he's gonna actually do it. Because, like, he, he won't do very well in Classic. I mean, he's a big guy. He competed in bodybuilding at that one point, And, 
like he, he his legs were a little bit too small and he wasn't in super great condition and uh, he's definitely a taller guy so he needs to be super crazy massive way bigger than he is to like win a pro card in open bodybuilding now he's definitely more fitted size wise for classic physique but his shape is definitely not classic at all especially after all the injuries especially after the bicep tears and just the heavy training that really you know kind of made his physique look more like a power lifter than like a bodybuilder so I don't think he can do very well, but I think he should definitely do it for fun. It will definitely be a lot of fun to follow it, to watch it, but is he going to do very well? Can he win a pro card in classic physique? Absolutely not. Not a chance in hell, but you know, still, I like the fact that he's prepping. Let's see. I mean, let's see what he can actually bring. If he really works when he's posing, if he can actually make his physique look better than it actually is, and if he works on like bringing down his waistline and he actually comes in super conditioned, then it can definitely be interesting to see at least that much <laughs> whatever you guys think about larry doing the classic physique or about nick walker's q a or about ian switching coaches stopping working with patrick and starting working with matt jensen whatever your thoughts are tell me down below in the comment section if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more stuff like this subscribe to my channel guys thank you so much all the best and bye bye